have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Leave it just like that. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So check it out. I am, uh, as I mentioned before, doing a little upgrading on my 3D printer. And um, I think it went a little bit extreme. So before I get to what I'm going to show you, I have some of this extruded aluminum. And I've had this about two years prior to actually building my 3D printer. Now this is 8020. Looks about like this. It's really, really nice stuff. It's really rigid. It's got these special cuts and notches for angled uh, clamping and all sorts of stuff. Um, and originally when I built my printer, I didn't want to use this because I didn't have pieces that were long enough to do what I really wanted to do with it. However, while studying and thinking about how I should uh, upgrade my 3D printer, I started looking at this stuff again and I decided, you know, maybe if I flip some things around and mount some things in different spots, I can actually make this work with the shorter pieces that I have. And with that said, I built this. Uh, I don't know if you can see the scale of this thing, but uh, yeah. My small 3D printer turned into a big 3D printer, and uh, this is just the framework, but uh, yeah, this is almost silly. Uh, to give you an idea, this red triangle represents my, the actual place where my linear bearings are, right here on these two red dots. The linear bearing rails are here, here, and here. And this, like, is just silly. It's just silly. It's actually almost, uh, it's about four inches deeper in each direction than my other one. Uh, so, yeah, maximum surface here is, uh, you know, from outside to outside, it's, uh, we'll go from corner to corner, it's 21 inches this way. And from inside to inside, we're at 34 inches tall. Uh, and that approximately, that approximately gives me between 18 and 19 inches in diameter. Um, at the end of the day, I would probably have to guess 17 and a half inches in diameter is going to be my best bet. So, um, yeah, this is sort of not an upgrade. This is more like a complete new build. Um, I almost hate tearing apart the other printer because it works, but I'm going to use the motors, the controller, the ramps, the LCD, all that stuff. It's fairly cheap. I could probably just make another one with what I have, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend a bunch of money. I had this stuff and I wanted to use it. So, um, yeah. So in this video, uh, I'm going to actually show you all the cutting and uh, assembly. Maybe not the assembly, but the cutting anyway, so you can at least see what the frame looks like. So to give you an idea, there's two reasons why I wanted to do this. Um, one, I wanted to be able to walk up to my 3D printer, grab it like this, carry it around, all right? Bring it over here, set it down, and it's ready to go. I don't have to calibrate it or work on it or mess around with it, it's just ready. Uh, so that's one reason why I wanted to use this rigid 8020 aluminum. Uh, the next thing I might do is actually put pieces about this size under the bottom and I'll put all my electronics and everything under there. So that's the idea. I don't know what I got myself into. It's almost dumb. but. Uh, There you go. Here's the new, the new 3D printer. And actually, this is probably going to be labeled something different than a Rostock. If you look it up, uh, this is almost more like a Costel or Costel or however they pronounce it. But the thing is, is it's not really either one of those. It's kind of its own. It's kind of its own thing. 
All right, so here we are cutting with the bandsaw. And I'm basically cutting these angles. Uh, it took me a few tries to get the angle just right. Uh, I kept manipulating it about a half a degree until I finally got it right. Matter of fact, I haven't actually tried to fit this. Oh yeah. Can't get too much better than that. That's pretty good. Get it up on here so you can actually see how far off we are. Not bad. A tiny little bitty separation there I think on the outside but man it's pretty good. So I, uh, I made this jig on the back side and the other thing is is this saw only cuts at a 45. Um, the head pivots instead of the angle pivoting here the head pivots which is pretty cool but uh, with that said in order to make this angle which is actually 30 degrees uh, on the back side um, we're supposed to be 30 degrees I had to angle this which this is originally fixed you're not supposed to move it and you just move the head which is nice however in this fashion I had to do it this way so I could get these in here then once these are actually in here let me get one in there and I'll show you. I have to, oh, I have to wipe this down. Boop. All right. Get some shavings out of there. So once this is in here, I set this end stop so that I can slide these pieces in here. And they just barely touch the end stop. And as you can see, I did some clamping on the back side of the saw, which is not normal. Normally you, you have this bar, which fits in this hole which extends out which makes this work but I had to do it this way then if you look here this is almost in the wrong spot this is actually going to hit this if you look straight down it it's going to actually hit that as it comes down so I had to hacksaw these off because we're temporarily out of sawzall blades so anyway hacksawing wasn't so bad so anyway there's how I'm cutting these I had to again skew this at an angle 45 plus whatever this is and then I adjusted this to get um, my pieces to fit nicely. So that's the bottom of my frame. It is bigger than the original. It's not uh, the original, it's a little bit bigger, which is going to give me a little bit more room to build. Okay, well, after a, uh, a bit of aluminum dust and uh, a few cuts, a few cuts more than I probably should have, would have, could have had to made if I had been able to cut that angle right. Anyway, this is the frame. This is what it looks like. Um, I decided to go ahead and make this whole thing bigger than what I originally intended to because I had the extra length of material and if I'm going to rebuild the whole thing, I may as well make it a little bit bigger. So these are actually uh, about 21 inches in length um, from the outside to the outside. And then this is my upright, quite tall, and they will go like this. So they'll be turned with the holes in the right way. But anyway, that's there's two of them down there that's just stacked on top of each other. This is going to be the actual height. Um, I don't know the height at the moment. I think it's 34 inches or something like that. I'll double check later. Okay, well, there you go. Now the next thing I need to do is uh, drill holes this way so I can clamp into this piece. All right, see you. All right, so here we're using the milling machine. I'm using a 3 quarter inch end mill, four flute and we're going to be slowly cutting in this thing. This is real time. I'm going to let it play out so you can really see what's going on here. But I'm going to cut almost all the way through, leave about a quarter inch or so, and this will be um, basically where I'm going to be mounting everything. So you'll see in the next portion here.
All right, here we are again. Now we're gonna finish that hole also with an end mill. If I tried to use a drill bit, it would just walk its way one way or the other. It would be a disaster. I actually don't remember the size of this, but I believe it was a three quarter. No, actually it was a three eighths, I believe. So anyway, all right, more of the uh, other fun stuff. We'll watch this uh, cut in real time. Alright, so I will show you a lot more of the putting the frame together and what hardware I'm using later. Right now though, this is just an introduction for you guys and I'll be modifying the frame a little. So, there you go. Thing. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Peace and love, have a good day, and uh... <laughs> Oh boy, I don't know what I got myself into. More soon. Peace. Don't forget, I've been doing a lot of this on the 3D printing live stream, so make sure you check it out. Here's the lapse of time. <laughs>